So in this video, we're going to talk about the idea of an E2 reaction. We're going to talk about the basics. So E2 reaction, the 2, stands for the idea that it's bimolecular. We're going to talk about what that means. So it's bimolecular. Obviously, the E, to no surprise, uh, is actually, or does stand for elimination. So being bimolecular, we say that we say that the rate is equal to K times the concentration of the alkyl halide uh, times the concentration of a base. Right. So elimination reaction, uh, like we said before, we are really using bases. Now E two reaction kind of similar to the SN two in that it's concerted. Okay. So in other words, it all it happens all at once. Now let's talk about two different uh, things that can occur as a result of an E2 reaction. So if I take this molecule and I use a base. Mm -hmm. Now, what a base does is that on the adjacent carbon that contains the alkyl halide, we actually remove a hydrogen, right? So we remove a hydrogen, and as a result, we take that bond and form a double bond between the alkyl halide and the carbon of interest. As a result, we're able to displace the leaving group. So this is the idea of elimination. Okay. Now the product of this, if you look carefully, we have the double bond in the middle of the carbon chain. Uh, I still have a hydrogen here and I have a hydrogen here. Okay. So this will be the product of an E2 reaction. Again, all happens in one step. Now, it so happens that we have uh, two possibilities as a result. And this is what we call the Zaitsev product. In other words, this is a code word for being more substituted. Okay. Now, I usually think of the Zaitsev product as the double bond being in the middle of the carbon chain. Okay. So notice here, the double bond is really in the middle of the carbon chain. Okay. And what we say more substituted, what we're really saying is that on either side of the double bond, we have a lower possibility or a lower amount of hydrogens. Mm -hmm. So on, on the carbon that contained the bromine, it only has one hydrogen. Now, if the carbon had contained, uh, if the carbon had contained two hydrogens, that would be less substituted, right? So the less the hydrogens, the more substituted the carbon is. Now, we're going to do the same reaction, excuse me. But we're going to do the same reaction with the same molecule. So here's my bromine. And we're going to use the base. But look, remember we said that the base takes off a hydrogen on the adjacent carbon. Well, we had two, we have two adjacent carbon. We have this one that we just used, but we also have this carbon right here. Okay. Now, the base can go ahead and take off the hydrogens on this carbon. Why not? It essentially is going to form a double bond and then displace the bromine. So really what we get is this molecule. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call the Hoffman product. So this is what we call the Hoffman product. And this, in other words, is less substituted. So essentially what I'm saying is that if you look at the carbon, this carbon at the end has two hydrogens. Right, so it's less substituted. It is at the end, right? So remember, I said that Zeta product. You can really look at the double bond as being in the middle, whereas the Hoffman product, the double bond, is at the end. 
Hmm? Now, the Zeta product, 9 out of 10 times, is what we actually call your major product. Hoffman is your minor, right? So if you do a reaction, uh, majority of the times, your product, you will choose the Zeta product as your major product. Now, to finish up our conversation, we have to talk about, obviously, the bases. Uh, bases, again, are anything that are really strong. So, uh, in organic chemistry, especially in organic chemistry 1, we're really looking at alkoxides. And this is the example that we have an R, with R being anything, and or O minus as uh, the, the kind of general setup of an alkoxide. Right, so an examples for these would be anything like CH3O minus. Obviously, we have sodium as the counter ion, or we may have CH3, CH2, O minus with sodium as the counter ion. Uh, in organic chemistry one, especially, you learn about the idea of potassium, and this is a special base, but this is potassium. T or terbutoxide and this is special in that it will only so let me write will uh, only act as a base so it will only act, act as a base and not a nucleophile So we have to remember that some of our molecules can act as both nucleophiles and bases. Uh, potassium terbutoxide is only a base. Right? And another thing about it is that it, de it depro and this one is important as well. It deprotonates uh, the most, it deprotonates the most sterically. It de uh, deprotonates deprotonate the most sterically demanded proteins. Hmm? So, in other words, what we're really saying is that it usually gives you the Hoffman product. Hmm? So, it doesn't give you the double bond in the middle. Right? So, essentially, what am I saying? Let's look at an example. If I take the same molecule, excuse me here. Uh, so, if I take the same molecule, And I use terbutoxide. Now the formula for it is it looks something like this. My oxygen is negatively charged, and I have a potassium as a counterbalance. Now remember we said that if we use these hydrogens on the adjacent, the on the adjacent carbon that contains the alkyl halide, essentially I'll get the Hoffman product. But here, I really have a big CH3. And so the CH3 is terically demanding on the bromine atoms. There's some sort of uh, interaction between the two, right? So this is the idea of terbutoxide. So it will always go for, it will always try to relieve the steric demand. And so essentially, it gives us essentially the Hoffman product. Right? So it is going to come in. Is a strong base, so it acts as an E2 in an E2 fashion, takes off the hydrogen, forms a double bond, kicks off the bromine, and so essentially uh, this is the product that we get from the reaction. Still another example with the terbutoxide. Can you predict this one? Pause the video and try it. All right, if I take this molecule and I use terbutoxide, what is the product? Well, the bromine is on the carbon with the two methyl groups. Okay. Adjacent to that, we have these carbons, but this is kind of in the middle, or in other words, it's not sterically demanded. However, we do have a CH3 here, and this is directly interrupting uh, or having a steric hindrance on the bromine atom. So terbutoxide comes in, takes off the hydrogen, form a double bond, kicks off the bromine, and so essentially the major product of this again is the Hoffman product.
There's my methyl group. There goes my double bond. So this is the product of the reaction of the turbid oxide. And that is E2 reaction is kind of summarized in a nutshell.